we're going to be talking about sexual selection. So first, what is sexual selection? We need to understand that sexual selection contributes greatly to evolution as every individual has an innate desire to pass on their gene to the next generation. So even when they're dead, their gene gets to live on. And the selection of mates leads to the natural selection. An individual is selecting for a mate with an ideal trait in the opposite sex. And these traits increases the chance of success when competing for a mate and through sex, these traits get passed on to their offspring and so on. And over time, these traits will become more and more common. Individual also go through great lengths for sex, as in some species such as the praying mantis, the male ends up getting eaten by the female after sex. And different species also have different criteria for choosing their mate. So selection, which is the interaction between opposite sex of the species where one sex will develop specific traits or behavior patterns to catch the attention of the opposite sex. This requires for the better reproductive success. For example, some specific characteristic of the appearance or some specific characteristics of movements. This mostly in females' choice because females can be picky, but males may benefit from mating with any females. Let's see an example in peacocks. The body symmetry, the number of eye spots on the tail, and the brightness of the tail indicate the fitness of the gene and the health status of the male, which apparently attract the female choice. In monkeys, there are some behavior patterns such as energetic, friendly behavior with paternal care characteristics, and of course the appearance, the brighter the fur, the better. And lastly, some of the birds, like birds of paradise, have what we call courtship display behavior, where male attracts female by performing specific movements or dance, or vocalization, or show off its strength endurance. Moving on to intrasexual selection, which focuses on competition between members of the same sex of a species. Individuals who are more powerful and of a larger physique are more likely to win against competition. Male deer, for example, have antlers that they use when battling with each other for access to females during the rutting season. Antlers are then shed when mating season ends. These antlers are also an intrasexual trait, where sturdier, bigger antlers signifies a healthier, well-fed male. In other animals like elephant seals that can weigh up to 4,000 kilograms, their size and conified chest help them overpower competition. Some animals have also adopted the practice of infanticide, where an adult male will kill off any male cubs in the pack. This is done by lions and langurs and helps to bring females back into estrus, whilst eliminating any potential threats, allowing the adult male to pass on his genes. So the model of mate preference evolution, there are two main models, direct benefit and indirect benefit models. For direct benefit models, there are several theories that act as a filter, especially when a female is deciding a mate. Resources acquisition is the ability of male to access resources. So female assess males based on what resources males have. For protection, this can be assessed by looking at the size of the male or the impression of the male, such as how strongly one male repel other males. Parental care works only when the male already have one another female and offsprings. For the fertility, when the better offsprings that male has in terms of number and health, it proves the better fertility. Parasite avoidance, it's simply assessed by looking at how clean they look. For indirect benefit models, it re requires at least three traits, ornament, preference, and viability trait, for example. Female choice evolves because female choosing male with more elaborate ornament produce offspring with higher viability. So the last discussion for today is sexual dimorphism in humans. Well, just like all other organisms that were presented today in the presentation, even we humans are sexually dimorphic. And to explain the mechanism of sexual selection in humans, there are currently five proposed mechanisms. Well, for the sake of this presentation, I would like you to narrow it down to two very important of them. One is the sexual coercion, which helps in explaining male dominance in males. And the second one is mate choice, which is observed in females and explain why females tend to choose sexual orientation and such other characteristic to attract different partners. To sum it up, 
is the key takeaways. What I want you to understand and know from this presentation is that sexual dimorphism is highly common in animals. It was Darwin who invoked sexual selection to explain varying characteristics among sexes. And lastly, even humans are sexually dimorphic, but to understand the patterns of sexual selection in humans, you need to study different population differently. Thank you.